Hello and welcome to another Grid Markets tutorial. This time I'm going to be going over the pre-flight. I have a simple job set up with an RBD and a render. It's basically render light camera RBD collider. Here's the image of it. It's a quick thing that I threw together to show you how a bunch of the features in the pre-flight work. So to start with you've got your list of files that you're going to be needing. You have three columns of checkboxes here. The first column is what is being uploaded. In this case, only the example scenes being uploaded. If you added a textures or caches, they would definitely be getting uploaded too. Then I have the second column, which is what is being downloaded. I have right here, it's saying I've got the outputs coming down. So the EXR files. The third column is what is called long-term storage. These are kept in storage for 15 days. Well, it's 15 days from the last time they were used. So if you're continually running the same like texture files for projects, and they'll be kept indefinitely. You also have your OTLs files. Whatever OTLs you're using in your scene are going to need to be showing up, so that way they can be uploaded and used on grid markets. In this case, I'm going to put the check mark on my cache so that way it is kept in long term storage. It'll make it visible in Envoy and make it so I can download them. Uh, beyond that, you have the list of here what files are going to be uploaded. If something is red, like if I were to check that, it would become red. That means that none of the files are being found on the hard drive to be uploaded. If it is yellow, that means part of the expected range is being found. So like if you have a, a looping animation and you only have say 50 frames and it's expecting 1500 frames, but you know that it's only the 50 frames are needed, uh, it'll be yellow and you can just ignore that. Otherwise you might want to check to see which ones are missing here in the selected upload files. Another very useful feature, when you have a file selected, the parameter reference box will, will pop up here with all of the nodes so that you can see what's using it. If you see a file that's in the wrong location, that's outside of your project directory or outside of one of your uh, variable paths, uh, this will help you track down which nodes are using it so you can either fix it or get rid of them, whatever is the need. You can see, if you hover over it, what the expressions are going to be, and you can see what's referencing them. So that's a really nice feature. I mentioned the remote roots, how this is going to work, so if, let's say I select this folder here. And I want this to go into a directory. So how Grid Markets does things is, when you upload a scene, we upload all of the things that go into it into a folder in your storage named the same as your project name. So in this I'll have example, because that's my project name, so example, and then inside that I'll have a folder named gmroot, and then inside of that will be all the files. Let's just say that I had another folder out somewhere else that I needed to include. I could say add root variable, and I can just say cache, and then remote directory is going to be, I can say gm underscore cache, and say OK. So now I have a new variable. So anytime dollar cache is referenced in the scene, it's going to know to look in the, this folder on grid markets. This is why doing relative pathing in Houdini is so important with grid markets. It's so that we can manage and keep track of all the files and easily be able to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. We have measures in place, so if you forget and you have some absolute paths, it can try to fix it. They're not 100% effective, so you might run into issues, and that's just so you know where to go. So if I don't want this, I can just click this clear remote root button and remove, yeah, clear, and it'll get rid of those. The next thing you might run into is if you have things in your files that are being referenced in ways that the pre-flight doesn't see, 
it can only read so much. It walks the scene and it tries to find all of the bits and bobs that you are using in the scene. But if you try to find things in a way that it does not recognize, like say you have an attribute that is being used to load a texture. Our system can't see that, so in that case you would need to use this Add Additional Files button, and that would allow you to uh, navigate your hard drive and add the files directly to the upload so that they would be able to be there in the final. So next is the Jobs tab. This is where you come to find out all your information about the jobs that are being defined in your network. It tells you what the name's going to be, what the node is, what the path is to that node, uh, the type of node, the frames are going to be uh, rendered on it, what take it's using, what dependencies it needs, the output path, which is really important so you can see where things are going for each one, whether or not it's a simulation. A simulation is going to indicate that it is going to process on one machine. There's a lot of situations where you're going to need it, obviously, when you have simulations, so they're history-dependent things, solver nodes, uh, anything in DOPS, some other places, but anytime you have history-dependent things where it needs to look at the information from the previous frame, or previous frames, uh, you're going to need to make it a simulation. The download output tells you are they going to be getting pulled to the hard drive after they're done. Uh, max machines, now everything without a lock is actually editable. So every Max Machines lets you double click on it and you can say how many machines are going to run on it. For a simulation, there's only one. It can only ever be one. So that's, but that comes in with uh, rendering. So let's say I had two renders that I was doing and I wanted one to have 15 machines and another one to have 15 machines. I could come in here and say 15 for this and now it only render with half of my allotment. If I leave it at zero, it just stays at the, it'll just use as many as you have allocated by your plan. The machine type allows you to deviate from what you have in your profile. Uh, I'm going to leave it as my main settings. The credits budget lets you define how much you would like for this job to be able to spend in credits. So if you set this to say 50, it will render until it is used 50 credits and then it will do whatever the credit budget action is. There are three options for this. There's alert, which it will send you an email, and if you have it set up through our website, a WhatsApp message to alert you that, hey, I've gone over my budget. The automated options otherwise are terminate, which cuts the render and stops it from producing any more files. The suspend will terminate all frames that have not started yet, but it will allow any frames that are currently running to continue until they finish. Uh, between the two options, this one, it will stop you from spending any more money, but it will also cut any data that is being currently processed off, so you'll lose that data. Suspend, you will finish the frames, you won't lose any data, but it will still cost you more than the 50 credits. So it's up to you to decide which one you want to do with that. The last two pieces of the user interface are the upload files and the start render jobs checkboxes. They allow you to uh, do kind of what they say. If you have upload files checked but you don't have start render jobs, none of your jobs will actually be submitted but all the files will be pushed to the server. This allows you to preload uh, caches and textures and stuff that you know you're going to need. Maybe you're not ready to actually render the scene yet so that way you could have that running in the background. Uh, and the flip side of the coin, if you have start render jobs done, say you have everything already pushed up to the servers, this will push the current scene file and that's it and it will start the render jobs without uploading any of the additional files. Both of them checked does both. When you're done, you hit save and continue and that will start the, that'll bring up the box and let you start the render or you can save and quit. That'll save the pre-flight configurations for later, and it will close the window, it won't submit the jobs. So if you hit save and continue, it'll pull up the launcher, you hit go, and that will push the data to Envoy and start your renders. All right, I hope this has been informative, and we look forward to seeing your renders through. Have a nice day.